Hello everybody, my name is Maddie and welcome back to my channel, but if you are new, welcome to my channel. Before we get into everything today, first make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that bell to know when I post. It would just mean so much to me. And also follow all of my social media and check out my merch. I will put it in the description down below. Today I am finally making the story time video about me and my family experiencing a house fire. Um, it is going to be a very intense video and we do touch on, you know, one, obviously traumatic events, um, PTSD a little bit, and yeah, you know, you know the deal. Um, so if that kind of stuff is a lot for you, um, you're probably gonna wanna click out, but um, yeah, I'm just gonna be talking about my experience, how it happened, the whole story, um, the after effects of like, you know, how me and my family kind of dealt with it and this trauma and something that crazy happening. I got requested to do a story time a couple of times about this story um, after my tattoo tour because I can put a picture here um, but I have my two cats tattooed on my calves because um, they saved my life from this house fire. Okay, so with all that stuff out of the way, um, this is gonna be one of my first story time videos ever. So I'm gonna do my best to not be completely all over the place um, and try to keep it as all one cohesive thing. And for me to do that, I do have a ton of notes on my phone. So if I look down, I'm sorry if that's rude. Um, I just wanna make sure I cover everything that needs to be covered. And yeah, we can get right into it. So um, this house fire was when I was younger. I was probably six or seven, I think I was seven years old, and um, we moved um, houses because um, my parents were going through a divorce, they just got a divorce, and um, we wanted to downsize the house because we don't need a big house anymore. So we moved into this one house, which was just down the street, and we all got like weird vibes from this house. And we all kind of just wrote it off as it was like my, my first time moving away from my childhood home. I wasn't ready for change, you know, classic kid stuff. I wanted to stay at our old house. So it was a very old house house. We were just renting it from a landlord. That's pretty much just to preface things. That's why we just moved into this house. So it was around Christmas time. It was December 2006 and we were getting ready for Christmas. Uh, we just got into this house. I remember we were decorating it with Christmas things and just kind of doing what we do before Christmas time. And then five days into living there, we only lived there for five days, we had a fire in the um, fireplace in the house because the landlord said we could. He said, that he cleaned out the chimney and it's safe to have fires in this fireplace and we did it all the time in my old house. It's just a common thing we would do in the winter time. Emphasis on the landlord told us that this chimney was cleaned, which was a blatant lie. Maybe at the time you wouldn't think that's such a big deal, but it was. It was a very big deal that the chimney was not cleaned. The night of the fire, I remember, again, I was a kid, I promised my mom, and this does go with the story, that I would snuggle with her that night, you know? Like me and my mom would always hang out on the couch together and watch shows and I promised her I would do that. She had some work thing to go to and I ended up falling asleep in my own bed. So then uh, my mom, we're gonna kind of like switch over to my mom's perspective because this is when shit hit the fan. It was in the middle of the night. I don't remember what time. Um, my mom woke up to Duke and Duchess, mainly Duke, on top of her like going crazy, kind of like what he would do whenever he wanted to get fed in the morning or something, um, which is I think what my mom thought was happening. Like oh, he wants to get fed, but it is the crack of ass. He's not supposed to get fed right now. So my mom actually pushed them off of her and went back to sleep. Um, and the reason why my cats were freaking out is because, you know, these two cats were my mom's cats before she had any of us. Cause like, you know, I have a bunch of siblings. So these were like her first kids. She's very in tune with them. They're very in tune with her. They knew something was up. The whole house was filled with smoke right? And then even though my mom pushed them off and went back to sleep, they got back on top of her and was clawing her and meowing at her, waking her up. And this time she got up and, you know, realized like, holy shit, it smells like smoke in here. We didn't know what was happening at the time yet, but we got to get out. All I remember now, back to my perspective, I woke up to my mom, like kind of shaking me awake. And again, I was so discombobulated. Like at the time, I didn't know I had a lot of really bad 
smoke inhalation and I wouldn't wake up for a while um, I don't know how long and my mom didn't tell me that until I was like an adult because she didn't want to freak me out but I wouldn't wake up for a minute but when I did finally wake up I just remember I was like whoa like and then I actually was like oh mom like I forgot to snuggle with you can we snuggle now like I remember I just kept saying that because I didn't know what was happening and I guess my kid brain thought my mom was shaking me awake so we can snuggle because I forgot <laughs> yeah I just remember like that was the only thing on my mind but then she was like oh like there's a fire there's a fire this is when like the trauma started setting in because something I wanted to point out there's gonna be a lot of times where I'm gonna tell you guys I don't remember what happened and it's not just because it was a long time ago I mean that definitely plays a part in it but I do remember a lot of what I did and what happened in my life before I moved into this house in my old house and I remember a lot what happened in my life in the house after this one but just like this whole time of my life is like so blocked out that I don't really know a lot I know about the house fire I know about which places we moved to in like special days but other than that just like what I did on a daily basis or any of that is completely gone like I can't really call it back a lot of the stuff I'm telling you is small things I remember and mostly what my mom told me so um, when we were like running downstairs I remember we had to like get our shoes on again it was the dead of winter it was snowing like crazy and it was so cold out and I only had like we had like just our jammies on we were getting our shoes on and my dog <laughs> thought we were like he was all excited bro my dog was ready to go bro we just got this dude he was a puppy um we still have him he's old as hell right now but yeah he started playing like tug of war with our shoes and shit and we were like freaking out we were like jack stop it oh my gosh we're gonna die bro but i just remember that like i remember especially my brother like freaking out at our dog because we were like dude <laughs> stop um and then i remember we got to the car and you know my mom was kind of laying down the law telling us there's a fire like she was calling 911. we were getting fire trucks here and stuff and the first thing i had a very strict teacher at this time she was really mean she was always so strict about homework and I remember I looked at my mom and I was like what we have to get my homework my homework's gonna burn and then I'll get in trouble and my mom I just remember her face and she was like you <laughs> like you don't don't worry about that I promise you it's going to be okay they're gonna give you a pass at school for your homework burning and I didn't get that but I do remember being like really worried about that which was weird because like I said like it, it was like my brain was processing it in a way that I was just like I was only dealing with it in a way that I knew how to and I was getting upset about things that I was used to being upset about because I couldn't understand how intense the situation actually was if you know what I mean because again this is talking from a kid perspective and something that I will always be sort of thankful for this happened when I was so young that I didn't have a lot of anxiety about it I had PTSD symptoms and I still do to this day but not I didn't have anxiety about where we're gonna live because for some reason I just didn't think that was a problem I didn't have anxiety about the financial stuff because my mom um, didn't like talk to me about that obviously I was a kid um, and if that happened to me now obviously like that would be so freaky and that's why my mom is one hell of a woman because she was a single mom at that time um, she had her boyfriend which he'll come in in a little bit but like that's crazy back to where we were I was freaking out because I wanted to get my homework and then my mom was like okay well I'm gonna go in and look for the two cats because we got Jack our dog and at the time we only had Duke and Duchess and after my mom got up Duke and Duchess scrammed <laughs> they just went somewhere um, so my mom was like I'm gonna see if I can find them and like again you guys need long pants you guys are freezing right now and that's when it like really hit me like I was freaking out I just remember like screaming like mom don't go back in there because I don't want you to burn to death and then I always like started having these thoughts that you typically don't have as a seven-year-old like I'm gonna be an orphan I'm gonna be this and that like mom don't go in there it's fine I'll, I'll be cold I'll do I'll feel like this that's fine just don't go in there and I just remember like she was like no I'm just gonna go in like super quickly and that really scared me I think that was probably the worst part of the night um there was another part that was really bad but that was one of the things that really freaked me the hell out so when she couldn't find the cats and she came out with pants for us to put on and I the only image that I have of this night that is 1010% burned in my brain is um, sitting in the car after my mom came in and then like you know the fire trucks started rolling in like uh, so many fire trucks and looking up at my window me and my older sister shared a room the glass shattering and flames coming out like so many flames right where the head of my older sister's bed is and that <laughs> that 
really, I, I just got chills on my leg. That really stuck with me. I remember looking at that and being like, man, cause like, even though this is taking a while to, you know, describe, this all happened in like 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Like, hence why I got Duke and Duchess tattooed on me. If they didn't get us up, like that was in 10 minutes. My room, especially on my sister's side of the room, up in flames, just, oh my God, guys, that was insane. That's definitely burning my brain. And that was right when my mom came back to the car, just very lucky. We are a very lucky family. Um, so we had eight fire trucks. Um, I confirmed that with my mom. So we had all the ones from our town and ones from surrounding cities coming in. We were out there for hours until they brought out Duke, one of our cats. I forget where he was at specifically, but the firemen found him and brought out Duke in a little carrier. Um, and my mom was just like, you know, freaking out like, oh, where's my duchy? Where's Duchess? And we couldn't find Duchess for a very long time. And I think we didn't get Duchess until the next day. Um, they were like looking for her all night or very early the next morning. She was up in the rafters. I don't know how that little bitch got up there, but she did. She went up in the rafters and thankfully, you know, nobody died. Everyone survived, including my animals. So then eventually the Red Cross came and they used their truck to block our car. So me and my siblings especially didn't have to see it. Um, they brought us like a bunch of snacks and blankets and we were sitting in the car. Um, something that I also completely blogged out, like I don't remember it at all, is apparently my older brother got like really sick and was like throwing up everywhere from anxiety. Um, and I do have like a really bad throw up uh, phobia. I'm very weird about it. I don't like doing it. <laughs> it really bothers me. But for some reason I blocked that out. I don't know if it's cause I had a phobia about throw up. Okay, so that was like the whole night, like the situation, how it happened, how we got out, what we had to do. A lot of it was waiting for the cats, um, talking to the Red Cross people who were very sweet and just trying to distract us kids from what was happening. We had to stay at my mom's dad's house that night. Um, I remember all the kids just slept in the living room. And I have like one memory of like us laying on the couch and he just like put on the TV. I don't know what was on. Um, but I just remember like looking at the, there was like a McDonald's commercial or something. And I just remember having this feeling of like, oh, like, am I going to live here? Or are we going to go back to that house? How, mu how much was it burning? Like how much burn? You know what I mean? Because like I said, I didn't, th they, they blocked it from us after a while. It was just like a very weird feeling of like, I don't know where I'm going. Um, but I didn't think too hard about it, but it just was one of those foggy memories that I just remember sitting in like a blue, like a room that is completely dark, but like blue tinted from the screen and just like laying there wide awake, um, trying to sleep. So some of the things we lost in that fire um, was pretty much everything. We did lose all of our video games, which was very hard because um, I that was like one of my favorite things to do when I was younger. Um, we did, my mom lost all the Christmas gifts she got us because Christmas was in a couple of days at that point. I forget which exact day this happened. We pretty much lost all of our clothes. We got some of our clothes back, but they smelled so much like smoke that we didn't keep it because it kind of like triggered our PTSD at that time. So we didn't get too many things back, to be honest. We ended up moving into my mom's boyfriend's house. This, this is when I was talking about where I don't remember a lot of that time. Like we only lived there, I think for six months until we found another house. It was a very weird time of like, like, I don't know what happened. I remember traumatic things that happened there, um, but a lot of it, like, <laughs> like it just doesn't come to me. Because like, you know, when you're a kid, you remember like small things you did, like what, what you did after school when you hung out with your friends or like when you played games or when you were doing this and that. Like it was a whole period of time where it's just like blank in my head. I don't even really remember what that house looked like, which is weird because I can tell you, I know it like the back of my hand, every other house I've lived in, except for this one. Um, so definitely my brain was just you know, getting to work, suppressing all of that because um, it was probably a little too much for my little kid brain. Me and my siblings all had very severe PTSD. Um, our PTSD showed up in ways um, I can more so speak for myself because I do remember these traumatic things. Like I said, I only remember a lot of the stuff that bothered me was um, the house falling apart in a way that was out of my control, like a house fire. So for me, it was mainly water. Like if my mom was running the sink, like letting the sink run with a big tub, not 
big tub, like a big pan to like boil pasta, but she would like go walk out of the kitchen to go grab something and she left the water running. I would like start screaming and run up to the sink and turn it off and be like, you have to watch the water running because if you let it go, it's gonna overflow and flood the house and then we're gonna not have nowhere to go again. Um, whenever she would put me in the bathtub, she would put me in the tub and keep the water running and I would just start screaming if she walked out of the room because I was like, what if I don't know how to turn off the water and the tub starts overflowing and the house floods and we all die. You know what I mean? Like it was stuff like that where it was just like very, you know, it was just PTSD, PTSD symptoms. Me and my siblings, there was only me and my two older siblings at the time. My, my younger brother didn't come into this earth yet. We would all sleep in the same bed together for that entire time. We had like this big bed, I guess, and we all slept together. So we always wanted to be close and like, you know, not lose each other. Um, I was also very afraid of the fireplace in my mom's boyfriend's house for obvious reasons, right? Like, I don't know, like I just never wanted the fireplace to be used. So I remember going back to school. So this is one of those things that like, again, I didn't really think it was that big of a deal because we were lucky enough to have like, you know, my mom's boyfriend to go stay with him right after everything hit the fan. Uh, they had like this little shindig for me in my class um, where I guess they like got, they all had to write me a card and they all got me like little gifts. At the time I was very artistic. Obviously that artistic thing I was obsessed with turned into makeup, but when I was younger, oh my gosh, I was such a crafty little bitch. Um, so I remember they got me like a bunch of different like art tools and stuff and uh, I had such a big crush on this guy named Reed. So Reed, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I had such a big crush on him when I was that age and I remember he had, he had to write me a letter, you know, everyone in my class did, but still I remember he, like I savored that letter. That was such a funny thing I did. Uh, that was one part of it. I just um, remember like the whole class was like really worried about me and I had like a bunch of people like asking me like, are you okay? And I don't know, I didn't think there was anything wrong, I guess, you know, like I was just like, yeah, like, I don't know, like m my life is going on. And like, you know, I kept having to get like, um, talk to the like in-school counselor and my teacher would always keep me after class to talk to me, make sure I'm doing okay, uh, make sure my family's doing okay. So everyone was very nice at school, uh, which is funny because, you know, I was worried that this lady was gonna beat my ass for not doing my homework that burnt up. Um, okay, so cue to Christmas morning. Like I said, all the Christmas gifts my mom got us burned. The whole town knew about what happened because this was probably one of the most interesting things that happened in this small town I live in, which I will not say for obvious reasons. Where I live, like everybody came together and like got us gifts, gave my mom money, like just the most nicest things. Like I think we had like one anonymous person leave us like thousands of dollars and we still to this day don't know who it is. That is so insane and so nice. Like everyone was so sweet during that time. And so many people donated stuff. And also something else I wanna add before I talk about Christmas morning is at that time before the house fire, I was obsessed with Animal Crossing, like so unhealthily obsessed. And I still am, but you know, kid obsession with Animal Crossing. And we lost it in the fire and our GameCube and our N64, just everything. I cannot explain to you. Mom's boyfriend had this huge um, living room and it was just filled with gifts from like, you know, obviously they got some, but a lot of people gave us stuff. And I saw Animal Crossing GameCube sticking out of my stocking. And I just remember that was like, I was like crying. Like I never cried tears of joy as a kid. That's like an adult thing to do. But I just remember jumping up and down and I was so excited. And like the whole living room was just filled. And it was like one of those things that at the time, I thought my mom and her boyfriend got us all this stuff. But you know, obviously as I got older, my mom was like a lot of that was donations from very sweet people who just care about other people. And you know, kind of like gives me hope for society when I think about that. I remember Christmas Eve, my mom had a fire in the fire pit. We were being ballsy, you know, trying to ease back into it, get back on the horse. And I remember I was so worried because I still believed in Santa and I thought Santa was gonna burn his ass when, when he came down the chimney. I was like so upset. Christmas was one of those days that I do remember very vividly. Like my older sister got a new iPod again. Um, we got all of our game systems back, um, a lot of new clothes. Oh my gosh, it was just one of those things that as a kid it was like okay like we're not completely screwed so then um that was kind of like the immediately after situation so the last section is going to be my how my life was ever since then so we moved into a new house everything was fine everything was great and those PTSD symptoms with water I had started going away a new girl moved into our uh, neighborhood 
uh, she was like out of town. Her m mom and my mom met somewhere and they were like, oh, our daughter should hang out because like my daughter is gonna be new to the school. And my mom was like, bet. Um, so then I met this girl and then we quickly found out that they lived in the house that burnt down. They like reconstructed the inside after like a while and put it back up for sale. It was one of those things that she wanted me to come over so bad because it was like her new house and she brought things from like her old hometown. And you know, I told my mom like I kind of don't want to go there. I think at this age I was 13. So it was like six years later. No, I was 12. Five or six years later. So it was one of those things I was like, I don't know if it would be good for me to go back there. I started like having like bigger thoughts about it and I was able to understand the situation and I was like, I don't want anything to come back for me walking into that house. But I did because I really wanted to make friends with this girl. And it was one of those weird things that like walking around the house, I was like, eh, you know, it, it just like felt so like dark, I guess. Like the vibes were so weird and odd. And I don't know, it didn't like bother me as much as I thought it would, but going back into the house <laughs> that I lived in that burned down was a weird experience. It was one of those things that this is gonna sound weird, but I almost felt bad for her because I was like, man, like this house is like has bad energy. It's really hard to describe. Yeah, so that was a, just another anecdote. So how it affects me to this day right now, present day Maddie. I only have very small PTSD symptoms about it. Not as bad as you would probably think. Any smoke, like, okay, usually like smoke from a candle. Any smoke that would happen inside. Incense is fine, like sage is fine and all that. But like if you blow out a candle is usually the main thing or light a match. Usually everyone in the house will like alert each other who's in the house like, hey, I'm about to blow out this candle or hey, I'm about to light a match to light a candle or I'm about to do this because the smell of smoke will not freak me out, but I'll perk up. Like, I'll be like, yo. And like, I'll be running around each of my, all the rooms in the house making sure like I what's going on. You know what I mean? Like my mom does it too. Um, So definitely like smoke smells can freak me out. Obviously bonfires don't freak me out. Like that's fine. Like anything like that, but anything inside the house that smells like a burning smell, not just like, you know, nice incense kind of makes me more alert and I have to figure out where it's coming from for me to be able to sit comfortable, which I feel like could also be a common thing for a lot of other people. So it's not too out of the ordinary. And fire sirens, um, like I said, there was eight fire trucks there. Um, when I hear a fire truck, knees weak, not feeling too good, get nauseous. That is one that I do not like sirens. <laughs> um, police sirens, whatever, you know, ambulance sirens, okay. But like fire truck, like the droning sound it kind of has. Yeah, like I always feel it in my knees first. Um, like a wobbly, like, you know, kind of like I'm looking down like a cliff or something, like that feeling of like, whoa, <laughs> I don't like that. But that is pretty much the only thing that still affects me to this day from that whole situation. Nothing too big, thankfully. Pretty much the one person I always just look up to in that entire situation is my mom, you know, cause me and my siblings were very young and it was kind of hard for us to fully comprehend the situation at the time, which is, you know, a blessing. But you know, my mom did have to deal with that as a single mother and she is just that bitch. You know what I mean? Michelle, mom, I love you. You're so great. Yeah, that is the whole story. I am sorry, once again, if it was all over the place. I just wanted to make sure I told you guys every little detail, cause like, I don't know if one of you guys, a couple of you guys commented um, saying you've been in a simu sim similar Maddie situation, or maybe you're just curious about it. Cause like, you know, you see like house fires in movies, not even just, you just hear about house fires, but you never know. Like you, you never hear from the source, like, oh, what happens? Like, what do you do after? So that was my whole experience with it. Um, <laughs> it was, hard, but it just made us a stronger family. And you know what? Thanks to these cool cats, I am alive and well to this day. That's it for this video, everybody. I know this was kind of a heavy video, um, but I hope it was informative and interesting. And maybe you guys can get to know me a little bit more. Um, I've been through a lot of traumatizing things in my life and also just crazy experiences. I can definitely make story time videos more in the future. Um, I have a lot of stories to tell if you guys liked this. And if you didn't, then I can fuck right off. And I will see you guys next week with hopefully a more lighthearted video. Um, thanks for sticking around if you're still here at the end of the video. Don't believe everything your landlord tells you. I guess is the one lesson from this video. Bye guys.